In this demo, we'll explore the Databricks file system utilities. Databricks includes a built-in utility called dbutils that simplifies common tasks within notebooks. For now, we're focusing solely on the file system operations. So let's click on file system utility here. The file system utility provides a set of commands to manage files and directories in DBFS and other supported storage systems. So for example, you can copy files from one directory to another. You can return the contents of a file as a string encoded in UTF-8. You can list the contents of a directory and you can remove a file or directory altogether. And there are other things you can do as well. So let's head over to Databricks and I'll give you a demo. So under catalog, you can see we have our Databricks file system. So this is the DBFS file browser. We have a file store directory and a tables subdirectory. We can of course view the contents in this UI, but we can also list the contents using the Databricks file system utility. So all you do is provide a path. So let me close this. All you do is type dbutils.fs.ls and you provide a path. So this is the root path if I just do a slash. And let's run this. This isn't super clear, but we return three directories. The file store directory, which we already know, but then another directory called Databricks datasets and another one called Databricks results, which are not visible in the DBFS browser. These two are special system directories that are provided and managed by Databricks. Databricks datasets is a read-only mount that offers a collection of sample datasets. And Databricks results is used by Databricks to store outputs, logs, and results from jobs and interactive queries. So let's view the contents of this directory. So I can copy this path and I can do dbutils.fs.ls and then provide the path like so. So this isn't super clear. So what we can do is we can specify this in a display function. So embed this within a display function and to get more space, I can collapse this. So let's press play. So now this should be in clearer tabular format. So we have a file here. This is a markdown file. The rest of these, apart from these markdown files are directories. So we can actually view the contents of an individual file by using the head method. So let me just copy this path and I'll return the contents of this file. So to do that, I will just I can actually just collapse this first and I will do a new code cell and I will do dbutils.fs, this time specify head and then run this. So now we return the contents of this readme file. So this is the raw data. Now let me show you how to copy data from one location in your DBFS to another. So I will copy this markdown file from this location into our file system. So to do that, I can type dbutils.fs.cp. First you specify the source, paste that in, and then the target path. So that will be dbfs colon slash file store, like so. So let's run this. And that's true. And if we actually click on catalog dbfs file store, we can see here is the readme.md file. We copied it from this location to this location. Now to delete the file, we can use the rm method. So we can do dbutils.fs.rm, which is short for remove, and you specify the path, and be sure not to specify this folder, otherwise it will try to delete the folder, but then you need to specify the name of the file as well, so readme.md. So notice we currently have this readme.md file here, so now when I run this, it deletes it. So if I go back to dbfs browser via the UI, it's gone. And we can further verify that by copying this path 
and doing dbutils.fs.ls and run this. As you can see, we only have tables. I should embed this in display so it's clearer. So we only have tables. So we have deleted this file. Now let me copy an entire directory. So what I can do is provide the relative root path and go to Databricks datasets. So you can be explicit with your path or you can just provide a relative path. And let me copy, let me copy any random directory. So I believe there should be a weather directory. Let me just copy this directory. This will also copy the contents of it as well. So what I will do is dbutils.fs.cp. I will copy this directory. So this is the source and I will copy it into my file store specifically in a folder called weather and I'll do weather underscore copy. So you know, it's the copied data. So let's run this. So we cannot copy a directory unless recurse is set to true. So we need to specify a third argument of true because this directory has got files within it. So it's got contents in the directory. We need to specify recurse as true. So it recursively copies the contents within the directory to this location as well. So now this should work and it does. So let's check the contents here. So I can do within display dbutils.fs.ls and then specify this path. And here it is. There are three files in this directory within file store. So I've already deleted an individual file using rm. Let me delete this entire folder, weather copy. So to do that, I can change this ls to rm like so, but this will fail because we need to specify an additional argument and I'll show you in a second. So the reason this fails is because there are contents in this directory. So again, we need to specify a second argument this time of true for recurse. So this will recursively delete the directory and the contents within it. So let's run this and this time it works. So now if we go to DBFS, we can only see tables in file store. So that's worked. Great. So that was the Databricks file system utilities. They're useful because they let you manage and interact with files and directories in DBFS and mounted storage. They allow you to do things like list, read, write, copy, move, and delete files without leaving this interactive environment.